When I think about the Middle Ages and quests and knights and chivalry in connection to adventure, I think about images of, of knights returning triumphantly from battle or from slaying a dragon or from having conquered something. So I think that that goes along with the idea of adventure ending in some sort of prize and but also definitely involving an aspect of danger. And I think also with that sort of adventure there is an expectation that goes with sending a knight out or sending someone out into this unknown. And there's the thought that they might not return, but the hope that they will. And the hope that, the, the realization that if they return, then something much grander will have come out of it. What I think um, Adventure in the Middle Age might have been, I think to me that was more of a conquering kind of adventure. So not necessarily thrill seeking so much as I need to find this land so that I can make money or I need to marry this person so that I can obtain this part of the region um, and I think it was a, a quest or adventure for power versus for self growth. I think that today adventure has a very different meaning because I think when you look back even if you want to say to the uh, epics like King Arthur's epic or even the Hollywood epics you were entertaining people who worked pretty much all day and then went to bed at night. But I think today, uh, adventure is more open to everybody. So it's the, the definition is much more liberal because we have more leisure time. So I think that in today's society, we can do a lot more things, uh, be it learn to rock climb or learn to scuba dive or just learn to do something that you don't need to know, but would be fun to know. Well, adventure to me implies that there's some sort of step that has to be taken to move in some direction and that usually requires courage and I think there's the idea that with adventure comes some sort of growth or reward or something ultimately good. I think that with adventure there's also implied risk and that's just part of of the unknown, but I think that that ultimately, yeah, ultimately good comes out of it. I think adventure is breaking from the norm, uh, taking a step out of your normal life, whatever the rhythm that is, and going and doing something different. Uh, it can be for recreation or even, I suppose, part of a job or career, but it's just doing something, I'd say, out of what society would define as ordinary. I think of it as something that stretches the comfort zone of an individual or society expectations, something that's kind of outside everyday activities and routines. For me that kind of can be either like going in the woods or kayaking. It can be activities that aren't necessarily thrill seeking but provide kind of an extra challenge to your day that you might not otherwise have. When I think about adventure in connection to my own life, I would say, one, that I consider life an adventure, that, that there's a thrill in the fact that we don't know what's gonna happen, and even if we try to plan it out, we can't plan it out. Individually, we're all going out on our own and finding things that are new to us that push us in directions that we didn't think we could be pushed. So, adventure doesn't have to be expensive. I mean, that's one thing I think people think, is they think that, well, to go and have an adventure, I have to have to buy uh, an $800 plane ticket and do whatever. In my opinion, if you grab a tarp and drive down to Hoosier National Forest and spend a night out under the stars, I really think that's more of an adventure than going to the Caribbean and staying in a walled enclosure for rich people for a week. So I don't think that cost is a really big factor. It's just what you want to do and taking advantage of your surroundings. Because um, some people spend their whole lives saying, oh, well, if I could go over there and do that, that'd be awesome because I could have all these adventures. But they don't ever look around them and take advantage of what's actually in front of them. So Megan and I took a wilderness survival class. And 
As part of this class, we learned to make fire, we carved our own spoons, we learned how to trap animals and how to skin squirrels, all kinds of great stuff. And as a part of this, for me, one of the things that was most adventure filled, I would say, was the fact that at night we had to get back to our sleeping area, our shelters, and so we had to walk, would you say, a mile to two miles ish without any other tools? Or we can't use compasses, we can't, there wasn't any maps really, it was kind of following the trail in the dark. We were given, we were provided a whistle on the first night in case we were lost. So I guess that was helpful. On the final day that we were in the woods, we did a blindfolded string walk, which basically involves having a tiny cord coursed throughout the woods for like a mile or two. It goes under branches, around trees. In our case, it went through a pond, and I did not know. Um, up a ravine and that kind of thing. So that for me was very mentally challenging, and that I would consider that in itself an adventure um, in comparison with the whole trip especially when you go into water and you know it gets chest high and you're just like, well, I hope this doesn't get any deeper because otherwise I might be drowning. Um, so it's kind of that like breaking through that mental wall of can I actually do this? Am I gonna be okay? I gotta keep going and I have to figure out where this trail ends. Um, I consider that my own like personal adventure. This last year I was able to put together a program for the Boy Scouts and my boss told me just do something fun. that will keep 15 year olds entertained for a week. So Monday, every Monday for six weeks was a 20 mile canoe trip. Every Tuesday we built a trebuchet. And I don't mean like a model trebuchet, I mean the arm was like 30 feet long on it. Um, Wednesday we did land nav races. Thursday we went to Michigan and went mountain biking. And once we got back early for mountain biking, so we took the sailboats out on the lake and went sailing Thursday afternoon. Um, so that was definitely an adventure, not just because of the activities I was doing, but being able to lead a group of youth, uh, that was definitely a really cool experience. I was in the in Glacier National Park and I decided to venture ahead of my family and I wandered up knowing that there was a risk of bears being around and so I would need to make lots of noise and so I was making lots of noise, wandering ahead, running down the trail and I came across this mountain goat and so I just stopped and um, and he walked up to me and then he just sat down and so I sat down too <laughs> and I yeah I didn't really I knew that there was this kind of this threat involved with the fact that he has these horns and he's a wild animal and he could attack me um, but there was also a thrill that came with that and so I decided just to be really quiet and I sat down with him and started talking to him and asking him what he had seen and then he burped. So that was <laughs> not really sure where the story's going. <laughs> I've given the opportunity to go skydiving, which was a very um, short, not well thought out decision that I made to go, um, but it was definitely one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, I think the hardest part was actually going and realizing I'm in a chute and I'm jumping out of a plane. We were kind of in the air getting to like 10,000 feet in the air and then they start unloading people. Uh, which you don't really have time to turn around because you're moving so quickly and the people need to be unloaded before you get too far away from your drop zone. And once I got out I realized I couldn't breathe. So that was a scary adventure to go through because I was not warned previously that you're falling through the sky at a very fast pace and you, with all the wind blowing in your face and kind of like that shock of what's actually happening, you forget to breathe slash you can't because your lungs are kind of just can't inhale or take in all the air at one time. So for a good 45 seconds of free falling, I was out of breath and was really relieved when um, my tandem partner had pulled the chute so I could kind of float my way back down. But I think for that, that was just a very opening experience because I had something taken away that like you need for survival, especially and kind of like wondering, okay, when is it coming back? And I'd appreciate it now. 
just working with people that um, you might not be 110% comfortable with, maybe being an age group or a different social background or um, I'll dare say, you know, some people are uncomfortable around different ethnic backgrounds, but it's just a matter of getting to know people. That can be a big concept of venture as opposed to the uh, Hollywood idea of you have to go places and, you know, see things kind of adventure. I think it also levels some people out. I think sometimes we get caught up in this whole bubble of I've got school and I have homework and I've got I don't know, volunteer, I don't know what people do on a daily basis, but kind of people get stuck in that and so like going on these mini adventures or going in these kind of out of the ordinary adventures gets you just to like broaden your perspective and realize like kind of put you back and realize like how much everything on the world affects you and like your environment. We have to to trust that in taking a risk that something beautiful will come out of that.